How's it going guys? Today I wanted to jump on here and talk about stimulus, recovery, and how to make those gains. So first thing we want to talk about is this bell curve. So what this bell curve represents is your potential to gain either muscle tissue, gaining metabolic endurance, gaining neurological coordination, whatever you want to label it as, these are the gains, right? And this bell curve represents your ability to make those gains and how you would find yourself somewhere in here depending on what you do to try to achieve those gains. So optimizing our variables allows for the most potential in gains, thus this nice big green bell curve. It also allows for more room to grow. So if we optimize everything and it looks like this bell curve, we have a lot of space where we can start targeting or hitting, right? We're hitting stimulus and recovery in this certain space to create this bell curve and the bigger or more optimized everything is, the more room we have for making gains, right? So if we optimize everything, even if we're not hitting things perfectly, it's allowing us more room for growth. Um, even though optimizing everything can be a tedious task, the payoff is much greater, as you can tell by how much room there is for improvement represented in the bell curve. Now this bell curve is split into two sections. The first section is going to be the stimulus that we are achieving by working out, right? So we go in, we do some heavy sets, we're achieving a very heavy neurological stimulus. And so say we hit it right on the nose and we've you know optimized everything we can and got as much stimulus as possible out of that workout. So that takes us to the very top of the bell curve, right? That peak, that's optimal stimulus for our workout. Now, <clears throat> Once again, it could be any type of stimulus that we're looking for, whether it's metabolic, hypertrophy, or neurological. The top of the bell curve represents us hitting optimal amount of stimulus, right? To achieve adaptation is what the actual goal is going to be. Now, stimulus is created by stress, and the amount of stimulus we create dictates how much we're going to need to recover. So if we're a highly trained individual and it create, needs a lot of stress to create stimulus, then we're going to need a lot more time to recover. If we're not a well-trained individual and it doesn't take a lot of stress to create the stimulus we need, then we won't take as much time to recover. <clears throat> Leading into recovery. So the other half of this bell curve that makes out all of the area in which we have gains is going to be our recovery. So recovery must happen for adaptations to occur. If we are getting great stimulus but we're not recovering well, chances are the adaptation is not going to be as great and, or at maybe even at all, depending on how bad the recovery is. Much like creating stimulus, recovering is a skill. Um, so being able to recover properly or knowing what to do to be able to recover better, things like that, getting yourself in these recovery states is definitely something that you have to master. Now, with that, majority of your time is spent trying to recover. So that should be a skill that we all try to get better at or at least take into consideration and utilize, you know, hey, what do I need to do to make this so that I can keep working out the way I want to, especially if most of our time is spent recovering, not creating stimulus. <clears throat> so what happens when we're not being optimal and have this great giant green bell curve to work under? Well, if the stimulus is great, say, you know, like um, someone with a lot of knowledge is programming for you and giving you this great program and it's supposed to do this, that, and every other thing, but every other day you're having a drink or you're going out on the weekends partying or whatever it may be, your recovery kind of looks like this top bell curve, right? So it's really that red line of recovery is now being hindered because it's not being optimal. So if the recovery is not being optimal, but the programming is, well, you get great stimulus and your lack of recovery then shifts the middle of that bell curve or the area that we're probably hitting off to the left as opposed to the right, right? So that midline would get shifted to the left with the shorter recovery or worse recovery available. Now, if we want to go a step further and say the programming is just complete shit and they're just taking guesses on what to do, don't know what sets and reps do what, don't understand the physics and principles that we have to apply to be able to create a good program, then we get the bottom bell graph or bell chart, right? So a shitty stimulus and a shitty recovery. So yeah, you're probably going to make a little bit of progress there and see some changes, but is that really everything that you could be getting out of what you're doing or at least the time that you're spending doing things right we're all have a very finite amount of time here and if we're wasting it 
by using shitty stimulus and not recovering or either one of the two, right? Maybe you have a shitty stimulus and great recovery, so you're maximizing how much you get out of that terrible stimulus. But even still, looking at the green bell curve, we have way more room that we could be making more gains. So hopefully this breakdown helps you with understanding the challenges that we face when we're trying to create stimulus and make that stimulus turn into gains because without the important part of recovery, none of it's really going to be happening. So if you're tired of being the hamster on the wheel, you know, figure out which one of these you're lacking the skill of and work on improving that skill.